Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. And today we're talking about alignment and orientation again. But instead of just talking about it like orientation, like we did last time, we're going to cover it. We're going to talk about angle. And now angle and surface area, even on simple objects, like these coins I'm working on here, can be very either good or bad for the print quality and good or bad for the print process. It's important to remember that both surface area, minimal amount of surface area is important, um, as well as maintaining detail while keeping the surface area minimal. So for something like these, these are coins. You want both sides of these coins to look good. Well, you try to set it up so you can do that. I try to print them almost straight up. So that way I can keep as many on here as possible. Decent amount of supports nested at the bottom. And then not too many itself on the actual coin. Until you get a little further up and it's there for extra support. For the most part, I let those build themselves. Now when it comes to other types of models, say this Goblin Queen here, you're faced with different issues, obviously. Based on size, we know that we want this super big one on the left to be hollowed. Maybe the one in the middle, and the one on the far right I would definitely just leave as a solid object. Now the one in the middle demonstrates some interesting conundrums and some problems. Its surface areas are large and I think regardless of its tilt or angle we're still going to wind up with big surface areas all at once. You might even benefit from turning her upside down facing her backwards. Obviously back down but head, head backwards to give you the most optimal use of support and, and space because her ears are quite wide and you can use them as a t-frame to support the entire model upwards would work just you just have to do it right in this particular instance i'm just demonstrating the surface area and how her surface area can be modified based on how you tilt her based on the degree of angle based on stepping you can see how that changes very drastically about where you start and where the gradual build goes up. Now again, something this size, I, I would probably hollow too because she's, she's a decent enough size that she's creating a large amount of surface area and I don't really like how much surface area she's creating all at once. And so for that, I would prefer hollowing some of those bits. The little one, there's no point. It's gonna be a very light piece of plastic. She's uh, 32 millimeters. Actually, she, may, she, may, she may not even be 32 millimeters tall, actually, uh, considering that she's supposed to be a goblin queen. So, This miniature, by the way, credit goes to Twin Goddess Miniatures. We don't sell these guys, as I've said a billion times in the past. I'd love to, but they don't seem to ever have any merchant licenses available. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Uh, anyway, we just like printing them. So, this one was free. We grabbed it on my mini factory. You should check her out too. It's the uh, Goblin Queen Regina. It was a free download. Enjoy. Go check her out. This is a very cool, very cool model. She kind of reminds me of a goblin version of Princess Toadstool from Mario. Not gonna lie, that crown is definitely reminiscent of that. But overall, I do like the style. It's a cute character. Uh, it does remind me some things I've seen around the internet, <clears throat> if you know what I mean. But uh, I'm not saying I'm into that, just you know, things I've heard. Now, of course, with the gigantic version of this figure, we're definitely hollowing and punching holes through. So we'll do a little bit of that demonstration too to show you guys how we do that. 
Um, and it's also based on orientation and angle. But we'll do that a little later. Okay, what I want to demonstrate now, using these uh, four different coins, is I want to demonstrate how each angle represents a different challenge. Now this is unfair, because this is not flat, so this is not like a base, where you can simply slap it down onto the surface of a build plate and print it. It would actually fail. It is not built to be done that way. It starts building in the middle and the rim a little bit, but there are islands all over the place. So it would not be an efficient thing to try and build like this. This would be bad. Also keep in mind that prints like this create very large surface areas and tend to have a large amount of pull. So much like your initial layers when you're printing, say, a raft or something like that, this would then continue to do that kind of pulling for however many layers it took to print the thickness of whatever object. Now, mind you, this isn't a very thick coin, so it wouldn't take very long. But again, there are better ways to print it than flat out like that. Even if you were to lift it, per se, and then raft it and start adding supports which we can demonstrate you'll see that there's really no point to it because the entire underside becomes an entire point of need of support and in order to support it well you will need to cover it in supports because this kind of surface area is going to be weird when it comes to the way it prints up. Now, I haven't tried printing them flat like this, and I don't really like printing big surfaces like this flat. I don't even like printing bases flat on the plate. It just takes up far too much room, and honestly, you wind up with angling issues. No, I prefer to just use them at an angle. I either go with the printer's preferred angle, which is usually between 50 and 55 degrees, and or I'll go with something above 70 to 75 degrees or even higher if I'm just trying to utilize the maximum amount of space on the build plate. The best way to do that, obviously, is to have them perpendicular to the plate, so they're, they're all sticking straight up. Some people don't like doing that because you wind up getting a... Um, a warping issue at one end and you you can it, 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 it does happen it doesn't happen every single one it's actually kind of random so you know again this will demonstrate kind of how each angle so the one on the left there has like a 71 degree angle the one on the right there has a 53 degree angle so you can see the way they build up is completely different because that surface area that initial contact everything is going to change one starts out a bit wider than the other one thins up a little bit faster has less surface area overall each particular slice. And so really, the higher the angle shows us that we have a, a better surface area and a more efficient surface area for the particular print. Now these aren't necessarily the only way you can print them. You can lower the angle if you want, but you create what's known as stepping at that point because the lower the angle the closer it becomes to being parallel 
and you really want to stay above a 45 degree angle. You can go maybe to a 35 degree angle if you're forced to based on size constraint. Uh, try to keep it above that. And see straight up and down, or almost straight up and down, because it's not, it's not perfectly straight up and down. It's going to give you the smallest build first, followed up by the lightest surface area possible as it builds straight up. And then all it's going to do is just require that it has a good foundation and then the rest of the print is simply going to stack itself on top of each other. This builds a really strong print and should give you a really solid um, material when you're done with very little layer lines that are noticeable and should print quite solid and steady. Now, again, you are going to wind up with some warping issues there at the bottom. Uh, two minutes of sanding, and that's about it. You'll be good. Let me give you guys a little demonstration on how the um, support system might look on the one that's going straight up and down only because of the fact that if you want to use this system you need to understand it needs to be cradled there's a process to it uh, because it's a pretty wide arc that you start with there on the bottom you need to make sure that you have a little cluster of light or medium supports depending on how thick the object is going to be and you want to make sure that that is consistent throughout the bottom and all the way up through the arch. If you can, have three sections of supports, each with bracings. But obviously you always start with some sort of a framework. You know, in this particular case, I, I haven't detected islands yet, but I actually don't think the object has islands in this particular orientation. So I actually think it's good. But I'm going to island check this one by eye, so I don't really, um, I don't really care about the uh, island detection. So the larger version of the Goblin Queen does present some interesting issues on her own. Though she is a hollow piece, and like I said in many, many, many videos, hollow pieces create a surface area, which do in return create usually an easier print, or a print that requires maybe a little less supporting because it's just going to be that much lighter in one particular area. However, not all prints are created or meant to be hollowed at all, and so in those cases, sometimes you have to kind of look at it from a different perspective. And the hollowing always needs to have drain holes, of course, and the drain holes wind up being in perspective and angles and orientations that just don't necessarily work with the particular item, or if they do work, it's going to create you know, more work for someone else later, and honestly, I try to keep them at a minimal, so. It's just a couple examples. Again, just demonstrating how I do the drain holes at angle, and this will be exported as an STL file and then re-imported so I can do the supporting with actual holes. Um, I really just prefer it that way as it does create a better experience for the holes and for the actual print because sometimes Leechy just puts a hole in places and then it places supports over the top of it or the support tip will be touching part of the circle, which is the hole, and um, that's it. That bit's going to fail. So uh, I don't um, 
understand how it works. You know, maybe there's something to it I can get. Did not work for me. Um, but yeah, we're just going to go over how the holes are going to go through the bottom and then I'll kind of demonstrate how this is going to build up and you'll see how this angle orientation, even though it's a large figure with the, with the hollowing, you're going to see that it's a very little surface area that it's using at once. And right, you know, as each uh, uh, layer comes up, it's going to be minimal uh, pressure and pull. So we'll see that as we uh, keep going through this. Anyway, that's all we've got for today, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. If you did, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell notification if you want notifications on episodes that get released as they are. Really do appreciate you watching and hope to see you all again soon.